Cheers everyone, Warwick here, and like I've said in a lot of uh, those YouTube thingies, those polls, I wanted to do a tier list video. Actually, I, I want to do a lot of tier list videos for a few reasons. Well, the first one could be that it's a, it's a low effort type of content, which doesn't mean that I don't enjoy doing the other type of content, but it's just something that, you know, you sit down, you, you take a tier list for literally anything in Spellforce, um, which I will probably do at some point. And um, yeah, you, you just chuck them on the list um, and, and, and see what, what comes of it. Now for this one in particular, I'm going to be making a um, ranking tier list of the Spellforce games. Now before I even start with this, I know that different people have different opinions on what games are good and what games are bad in the Spellforce series. I just want to emphasize at the start that I absolutely do not care if your opinion isn't the same as mine, because that's not the point of the video. This is my opinion on how I perceive the games, on what I think of the games, and that's fine. If you have a different opinion, great, you can always make your own video, you can always make your own tier list. I will link the link to this whole tier list maker thingy in the description, so if you want to make it, make it, go and share it on our Discord, share it, you know, somewhere, or just write it in the comments. That's great, but this one is mine. You don't have to agree with it, I'm not expecting you to agree with everything I'll say here. Now. I won't just chuck them on there, I'll try to give a sort of explanation as for why I'm putting a game on a particular rank. As you may have noticed, there's no F. I only put E as the lowest one. That's because I feel like every Spellforce game has at least something to offer to you. A F would mean, in my opinion, that that game is literal garbage and you shouldn't touch it no matter what you're doing, where you're from, but, but I, I don't think there's any games like that. We're gonna go through them, they're all listed down here. Um, one thing uh, you also may see here is that there's these two, like this one and this one. These are uh, mobile games, particularly um, this one is Spellforce Might uh, or Heroes of Magic, Might Magic, I have no idea. It's on the Google Store, you can buy it for I think like 7 or $8. I've bought it recently, actually just for the sake of this video so I could at least say, okay, I've played this game before I make the video. So I'll be ranking that one, and Master of War, which is a game that originally came out with Spellforce 2, the Collector's Edition, and then later it was turned into a digital format, and you can download it for free now as well if you want to, and it's a card game. But I'll explain a bit more about them when we get there. Uh, so yeah, let's start with Spellforce 3. I'm gonna put Spellforce 3, the base Spellforce 3, at E. Um... The main reason for that is, well, obviously, uh, the, the story. But yeah, we'll put Spellforce 3 at E. It had a horrible launch, riddled with bugs. I don't enjoy playing it whatsoever. Uh, this is this is one of the gripes I have with most Spellforce 3 games. I just don't like the gameplay. Even if the story was perfect, I mean, then I would at least have a reason to replay them if it was correct, but I just don't like the gameplay, and I'm gonna put um, it at E. It's gonna be a bit different for the other games uh, in, uh, in Spellforce 3. We'll get to Soul Harvest next, but yeah, difficult launch, um, horrible law breaks and everything uh, in between, so it, it goes into E. Would I say you shouldn't play it? No, you can if you want to, but for me personally, it's an E. That's a game I'm never seeing myself replaying, ever. Alright, Soul Harvest made some improvements. Uh, not in the story, the story is still fucked, but for, just for the gameplay improvements alone, I will chuck Soul Harvest into D. That doesn't mean that I, I think it's 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 better in, in the sense of, uh, you know, I enjoy playing it more, but there were gameplay improvements, there were, um, the, the launch was much smoother, so it, it just wouldn't be right to chuck them both into E, I feel like. So yeah, that's where we're gonna put it. Next up, Dragonstorm. Now, Dragonstorm goes into A tier for me. And honestly, Dragonstorm could easily have been S tier. The, the only reason why I didn't put it in S was because Dragonstorm is an unfinished game. About one third of Dragonstorm is missing from it because of rushed development times and, and they were rushed to put the game out, they, they didn't get paid and stuff, so a lot of content was cut. Even so, I think if you consider Spellforce games that give you some sort of, I guess, fan service, you could call it, Dragonstorm is just up there. Dragonstorm is by far the Spellforce game with the most references to previous games. 
I, I, I like to compare it to sort of a love letter from Phenomic. It has so many references, so many quests, so many things, even in, in quest descriptions and everything. I just love this game to death. I love playing it. I love how it's structured. The only bad thing about it is that it sadly wasn't finished. If Dragonstorm had been finished, it could have very likely been my favorite. Okay, um... Shadow of the Phoenix. Shadow of the Phoenix, I will also put in... in, in um, A tier. But I'll put it below Dragonstorm, actually. I still enjoy Dragonstorm a bit more. Now, the reason why um, I put it there is because I feel like Shadow of the Phoenix did a lot of things good. I, I enjoyed I enjoyed it. I, I think Shadow of the Phoenix was a, a very good conclusion to Spellforce 1. It's, it's a game that I, I often like to replay. That who's which levels I enjoy, especially Imperia. I feel like Imperia was kind of the first big city that we got in Spellforce. Like, sure, you had Greyfell in, in uh, the Order of Dawn, and you had Tiganar in Breath of Winter, but Imperia was the real, like, first big one. And they did some innovative things there with quests. You have some really interesting maps. You have um, a lot of puzzles in the Clockwork Crypts, which was a new thing they tried there. And I just feel like overall, it's a great game. Now, the next one is Spellforce, um, the, the mobile game that I mentioned earlier. I'll put it in C. Um, it's hard to rank a mobile game between PC games, because a mobile game isn't, it, it's obviously, it hasn't been made to the same standard. I've played this for a bit, and it does what it, it you know, what, it, what you think it'll do. You just play the game, it's sort of like this... Um, you put your thing, like Heroes of Might and Magic, kinda, people compare it to that often, where you put your pieces and then just tell them what to attack on, on a certain place and they attack. The game has absolutely no story. That's something they even mentioned, I think, in the marketing, that the game is completely story-free. I mean, there is something there, but it's not really, you know, relevant for any, um, any story we had from the games. The game is just there. Y you can play it. You can have an okay time with it. If you like uh, Heroes of Might and Magic, this game might be something for you. I'm personally kind of meh on it. That's why it, it comes into C. It does what it does okay-ish, but it's just not my thing. Now, um, The Order of Dawn is my S tier. The Order of Dawn, while there's a lot of different games uh, that, that um, are really good, and that do certain things better than The Order of Dawn, for example, I think Shadow of the Phoenix, mechanically, in a lot of places, is better than The Order of Dawn. However, one thing that, that kind of edges the Order of Dawn out is the fact that the Order of Dawn is... It's the first one, right? It started everything. And... I, I just don't think it would be right to not put the game that kind of started the whole series into S. It's a good game. It's a solid game. I still played... I've played the Order of Dawn, I think, the most out of any Spellforce game. I think I have more than 20 playthroughs at this point of this game. Maybe I'm getting close to 30. And I'm not, I'm not getting bored of it. I don't think I'll, I'll stop playing it in the near future or even in the far future because it's one of those games that you just want to play it. It's hard to explain. It's really hard to explain for me, but it, it's a game that I, I, I'm, I'm not getting sick of. I'm not getting tired of. Next up, we have Spellforce 2 Master of War. Now, a lot of you also may not know what Master of War is. Again, this is something that came out with the collector's edition for Spellforce 2. Um, Master of War is a is a card game where you have units on cards, these units have stats. I'm oversimplifying it and there's more to the game than I'm saying here. But it also has a port for, for mobile phones and PC. I will put it into B tier. Because I enjoy card games more than I enjoy this Heroes, uh, like Heroes of Might and Magic kind of thing. Nowadays it's sadly not as active anymore, but you can still download the game and play it with your friends. The servers are still online. Um, so yeah, if it's something you like doing, you can check it out online, I think. If you just Google Spellforce 2 Master of War, you'll, you'll find something. It's a um, really good game. Then yeah, next up, we have... Oh, and I just noticed that... Uh, I forgot... Oh. Demons of the Past. Okay, I'll, I'll do some editing magic for Demons of the Past, it's fine, whatever. Anyway, um, next up we have Spellforce 2 Shadow Wars, and Spellforce 2 Shadow Wars is difficult to rank for me. Because, not because I don't know where I want to put it on the list, but just how it compares to games that are next to it. Um, it's going to go into the S tier for me. 
just below The Order of Dawn, but honestly, these two games, for me, could be on top of each other. I know a lot of people complain about uh, The Order of Dawn not really... Um, uh, not The Order of Dawn, I mean Spell Force 2 being different, it has different art style, they simplified the RTS, they uh, simplified the RPG system somewhat, it looks a bit different, it plays a bit different, and those are valid opinions, although I've never had that problem. I actually like both the Spell Force 1 and Spell Force 2 thing. Um, when it comes to when it comes to gameplay, I enjoy playing them both, uh, and I've never had an issue with that. It's hard to compare it. I would even say in a lot of things, Spell Force 2 is better than The Order of Dawn. Again, The Order of Dawn only edges it out a bit because it's the first game of the series. But Spell Force 2 improved on so many things, from 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 how the game feels to the atmosphere in it. Uh, in, again, in my opinion, but to how certain quests were made, how uh, certain things were done. It had the West Guard, which was an amazing thing we had. I love the West Guard, it's probably my favorite map. It had uh, maps like the Needle, where you could have your own uh, people that you can command, where they should attack and stuff. It had so many innovations. So while it is true that um, it simplified certain things, which again, I don't think is a bad thing, it improved so many others and brought in so many new things that it's just, I just love playing that game. Um, Fallen God. Fallen God is also difficult for me because um, the Fallen God again had some gameplay improvements and stuff, but I still don't like the Spellforce 3 type of gameplay. It's not something I enjoy. Um, for the sake of improvement, right, I will chuck it into C tier, but I'll keep it below the mobile game. Now, some of you might think that that's not fair, but again, my personal opinion, if you don't like it, make your own list. Um, Spellforce 3 Fallen God is, it, it did certain things right, but it still has law issues. Alright, it, it has law issues, it has things that don't really make sense, and that, at the end of the day, is the most important thing for me when making this list. A game like, I don't know, Dragonstorm could be buggy as all hell, but have the, the, the law consistent like it does, I would still put it above a game that works perfectly but has law issues, because that's kind of the, the, the most important criteria for me. So yeah, we're gonna put it into C. Uh, th there is some improvement again from Spellforce 3 to Fallen God. Let's see what the future brings, but um, yeah, as long as they don't... Um, as long as they don't fix the law to get it accurately in those games, none of... no game is gonna go above C for me if the law isn't good. Okay, um, Faith in Destiny. Now, Faith in Destiny is um, weird. It's a bad game. It's definitely a bad game, and I'm gonna put it into D tier. Um, the reason I'm putting it into D tier... Actually, I'm gonna put it into D tier, but I'll put it above um, Spellforce 3 here. And the reason for it is, it's a, it's a horrible game. It's horribly optimized. It, it has law issues. All of that, right? But the reason why I'm putting it above Spellforce 3, and this is something that I'll do with, um, that I'll touch upon with the Demons of the Past as well, is that I still enjoy the Spellforce 2 type of gameplay that's in Faith and Destiny more than I do in uh, Spellforce 3, right? In any of the Spellforce 3 games. Um, so that's kind of the only reason for it. There's also another thing where at the end of Demons of the Past, even though the lore was all over the place, it wasn't written well or anything. Um, at the end of Demons of the Past, they um, say that, oh, it's it's just kind of some vision of the future, not actual events that happened, which they, they kind of retconned those two games. They say, okay, Faith and Destiny and Demons of the Past aren't really canon. We noticed that we did a bad job with those, uh, with the lore in them, and, you know, we're gonna save ourselves that way, something I wish they would do with Spellforce 3, but okay. Uh, anyhow, um, I enjoy the gameplay more. I would rather see myself playing Faith and Destiny than I would um, Spellforce 3, so that's that. Um, Breath of Winter. Breath of Winter is going to go into A tier as well. And Breath of Winter is going to go into... Well, it's going to go a bit below, right? As it is right now. Um, I love Breath of Winter. I think Breath of Winter is a great game. Um, all of these games are super close. By, by the way, in, in S and A tier, everything is very packed here. Um, these are not big differences between how much I, I, I like those games. Um, Breath of Winter was interesting. It was a bit more fast-paced. They had some novelties that they introduced. So yeah, very solid entry. I like replaying them. I love replaying all of these games in SNA, and I do it often. And Demons of the Past. Now, hmm, 
Where do I put Demons of the Past? Because Demons of the Past had more to offer than Faith in the Sea. I'll put it into C tier. Demons of the Past is C tier. Since I'm editing this, it's gonna be behind Fallen God, but honestly, I would put Demons of the Past in front of Fallen God. Again, they retconned the law mistakes in Demons of the Past and Faith in Destiny at the end of Demons of the Past, so the law in them doesn't even matter, and I just enjoy the gameplay a lot more. Demons of the Past also has a lot more gameplay than Faith in Destiny does, and I, could, I would rather see myself playing um, Demons of the Past than Fallen God. And with all that said, that's my tier list. Um, my personal opinion, I would like to know what you think of, of, like if you agree with something that I did here. If you disagree, also tell me why, and your opinions on it, and maybe even make your lists. Again, this template is going to be in the description below. You can make the tier list yourself, share it on our Discord or something, and yeah, hope that you enjoyed it. I will try to make a lot more templates in the future in this kind of way and if you have any suggestions for me on what templates I should do, just write them in the comments. It can be really about anything. Templates about spells, templates about weapons, templates about characters, it doesn't really matter. But with that, I hope you liked the video. Um, if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!